Well, welcome to Strathroy United Church uh, for today's sermon. Uh, we had a live stream going this morning, but somebody forgot to turn on a button so that there would be sound. And I know that left a number of people, uh, I guess, probably frustrated. So my apologies to everyone, but here's the sermon. And uh, I trust that you're able to watch communion and from the actions uh, know how to participate uh, with us. Uh, so our scripture passage today <clears throat> is from Ezekiel. And Ezekiel talks about sheep, uh, bad shepherds, and God as the good shepherd. Uh, you've probably seen the word sheeple. It's the, the new insult. Uh, a most recent word into the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, an American dictionary, so I think it's quite fitting there. You'll hear this term used often by anti-maskers, conspiracy theorists, wanting to criticize people who follow the guidelines that are set out by governments and other authorities, uh, claiming that uh, they're conformists. They are sheeple, which is a portmanteau of putting together the word sheep and people, blending those two together, thus sheeple. The claim is, the insult is, that sheeple can't think for themselves. Uh, whereas those anti-maskers, conspiracy theorists, say that a bad sheep is what you would call a sheeple, Ezekiel, in the scripture passage today from Ezekiel 34, says that really being a sheep is okay. The bad sheep are the ones who, to paraphrase what Ezekiel is saying, are the pushy uh, butt headers, the ones who like to headbutt people around in the flock. <clears throat> the prophet uh, uh, Ezekiel was a different kind of personality. Uh, he was uh, overbearing, uh, cataleptic, uh, ornery, uh, the kind of kid, when he was a kid, who probably didn't keep friends very long. He likely tattled on them, probably uh, was quite a loner because anybody who uh, did something wrong, he'd probably turn them in. Not the kind of person you enjoy being around and, I guess, perfect credentials for being a prophet. And he's especially intolerant of powerful people who abuse their positions. Uh, Ezekiel rebukes these powerful people, these people who like to headbutt sheep uh, to criticize uh, and rebuke people who get off on being greedy. They get fat off of other people in the flock by pushing them around and taking what doesn't belong to them. And then when they're done with them, they'll just push those vulnerable people out of the flock and scatter them. Ezekiel doesn't have much patience for that. And the word of God that he delivers to the nation and to the world, to us, is that God doesn't tolerate that also. Uh, what's a sheeple to do in response to such an insult? And there's something about this insult that I'm sure Ezekiel would have a, uh, a sharp word about. It's the kind of insult sheeple is that you would hear from say a so-called libertarian and I'm not against freedom and I'm not against the idea that we want to liberate ourselves from any kind of master or power or principality other than God but when you hear people who fancy themselves as libertarians using uh, the term sheeple they're probably sheep themselves. Uh, the idea of um, simply uh, bucking tr the trend, going against the crowd, isn't necessarily being liberated or libertarian. It's more so being obstinate. It's being, um, you could say, somebody who is oppositional or even defiant. And you probably remember that kid growing up that how did he decide what he was going to do? Just whatever he was told he wasn't allowed to. There's no critical thinking in that. There's no liberation in that. It's really just a bad habit. And <clears throat> to call people sheeple from that frame of mind places an unfair burden on them. It makes them think that uh, their lives will only be meaningful if they can rise above 
uh, break free from the flock, as though belonging to a community uh, and to a way of life is problematic. Ezekiel wouldn't have anything uh, to do with that way of thinking, <clears throat> that rugged individualism that really is just another way of uh, living in isolation. Do you remember the story of Lawn Chair Larry? Uh, back in 1982 in San Pedro, California, uh, before the incident, uh, his neighbors thought of him as just a nobody, a conformist, someone who didn't stand out from the crowd. Uh, Larry, all his life, wanted to be a pilot since his childhood. But uh, when he got older and thought about joining the Air Force, his poor eyesight limited uh, his ability to follow that dream. He was a truck driver, and one day he decided that he was going to rise above uh, his life and fulfill that dream. And he and his girlfriend went to the local uh, uh, surplus store, Army surplus store, and with some forged documents from where uh, Larry worked for, he was a truck driver for a film company, <clears throat> he was able to purchase 45 uh, weather balloons, 45 eight foot wide weather balloons and the tanks of helium to fill them. And along with a friend, he got his favorite lawn chair, strapped it down, attached all 45 of these helium filled balloons to the lawn chair and he packed a parachute, some sandwiches, some beer, a camera, uh, a CB radio and a pellet gun, sat uh, ready to go and told his friend to cut the line that was holding down his balloons. Larry didn't do his homework. He didn't stop to measure uh, just how many weather balloons does it take to lift a man in his wheelchair? How much helium is going to do the job? When he was cut loose from the ground, like a slingshot, he shot straight up into the air, or rapidly, 16,000 feet. That's three miles into federal airspace. He, he white-knuckled it the whole way up, uh, and the, the rapid ascent caused him to lose his glasses. He couldn't see anything except the blue skies around him. Uh, he had his pellet gun with him so he could shoot the balloons to help with his descent, but with that rapid slingshot climb three miles into the air, because he was just holding on for his dear life, he didn't dare grab his gun and try and shoot any of the balloons. So there he was, three miles in the air. It was overheard uh, conversation radio uh, between an airliner pilot and uh, ground control. The pilot saying, I see a man in a chair with attached to balloons at uh, 16,000 feet. And ground control replied back with, you have a man who is attached to a um, a hot air balloon? No, I have a man in a chair with clusters of balloons. You can see the picture here uh, beside me. <sighs> Larry thought that he would simply slowly drift out over to the Mojave Desert where he could make his descent and call it a day. Uh, but he realized that his... his uh, hands were starting to grow numb from the cold of being so high in the air and his legs that he better do something quickly and uh, more importantly he was drifting out towards the ocean rather inland toward the desert and so he took his pellet gun and shot out a few of the weather balloons and lost the grip on his gun and it fell to the ground somewhere below but fortunately for Larry, he'd shot enough balloons that he started to descend slowly. He'd been up in the air for 45 minutes. His descent was towards power lines. 
And the emergency crews who were monitoring a situation um, just ordered the city to shut down its power in Long Beach. The whole city shut down so that he didn't fry himself when he hit the power lines. He made it to the ground safely after they got him down from the, the lines. And he was summarily arrested and fined $4,000, spent some time in jail. The fine was eventually lowered to somewhere around $1,500. He became a temporary celebrity, um, found himself on Letterman, was in an ad for Timex Watch. And being a temporary celebrity, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Um, he wanted to be a motivational speaker, and that didn't last long. Uh, being a celebrity is like winning the lottery. Uh, it seems great at first, and then you realize that everybody just wants to consume you. And with Larry, uh, after his short time in the spotlight was over, uh, his life being changed, a um, decade and a year later, uh, his life ended unhappily. Rising above the crowd seems exciting, but it can also be alienating because eventually you have to come back down to earth. There's nowhere to belong at 16,000 feet. The planes aren't going to stop for you and let you in. Or as Elton John sings, it's lonely out in space. And truth is, you may not fit in the same way when you return back to earth. How do we understand uh, people who are convinced that they shouldn't belong in the flock. Uh, people who are convinced that their life is only meaningful if somehow they can break away from it all. And we learn from Ezekiel something important about people, that there's nothing wrong with being part of a flock, nothing wrong with belonging, that uh, the flock needs to respect and care for its other sheep. And that's how you care for the flock. Ezekiel teaches us something also about God, that God has high expectations of the shepherds who overlook us, and that God is the good shepherd that we belong to. So let me end with this. Here's the irony that um, everyone is a sheep to some kind of flock. Everyone is a sheeple. And whether we've been head-butted and pushed around and scattered by the greedy sheep, or we feel the pressure to slingshot ourselves out of the group in search of something better, we'll eventually have to belong somewhere and come back down to earth and connect with a place where we can belong. We just have to choose the right flock. As for me, I choose to be one of God's sheeple, and I'm proud of it. Thanks for taking part in today's worship service. Uh, thank you for uh, your ongoing ministry, whatever you're up to, however you're caring for other sheep in God's flock. And may God bless you in that work and in that ministry in the week to come. Bye for now.